Hi, my name is Ryan Wiggins. I'm the head football coach at St. Francis de Sales High School in Columbus, Ohio, uh, here on Play a Day, talking about the 4-3 defense. And uh, myself, I'm, I'm a defensive guy. I'm a defensive-minded person. And so when I was thinking about what kind of defense I thought gave us the best advantage as a football team, uh, I like the defense that I'm going to talk about today. I think it's simple. Uh, I think it's sound. I think the focus is on the fundamentals and um, it's easy to align to. And that's one of the things that I've found with defense. You know, we talk all the time as a staff about a defense being successful. We first have to align. We've studied film um, where, you know, almost 90% of the time when you make defensive mistakes, simple alignment was a factor. You know, aligning too tight, aligning too loose, maybe not being lined up correctly at all. So we want to be able to align. We think it's important that they know how to do that. And if they can align and they can know a little bit about what their job is, and of course we give them fundamentals and techniques on how to execute that, then we have a better chance to play good defense. So that's how I've arrived at a defense where I think it is, is, is very, very simple to understand. And it puts the focus on the fundamentals and it allows our players to be very aggressive. And starting to talk about the defense here, there's three things that I really like about it. Uh, the first one is, is we're going to get eight people to the run. We get, regardless of the formation, uh, way we're reading our keys, we're going to get eight people to the line of scrimmage on a run play. And, you know, nowadays with, with everybody running the option and the read option and all that, it's even more important, I think, to get extra people on the run. So that's one thing. The second thing is we have the ability to double receivers. And you'll see when we align that we can get them outflanked. So if they have one receiver, we're going to have two on one. If they have three receivers uh, or two receivers, we're going to have three on two. Okay, so it gives us the ability to double receivers and also do some things with our coverage. And third, um, and lastly, it is eliminate big plays. And I think any defensive coach, regardless of scheme, will tell you that, that big plays are a killer. One of the things we're going to do by having each and everything covered within our, within our base defense, you know, in theory we should eliminate big plays because we're not giving up zones and things like that. Along with giving up big plays, we're going to have three things that we're always going to cover in our defense. And the first thing being force. You know, the ability to keep the football from bouncing outside. We're going to have a designated force player on both sides of the ball. And that may sound simple, but oftentimes when a player loses force, you see the effect of that. Or when, as a defensive coach, you might game or scheme your force player and you give up that perimeter and the offense is able to get it, uh, you see that what a, what, how important a force player is. So we're going to make sure we take care of force. We're always going to have a trail contained player, and that's going to be a guy on the backside that's going to look for a reverse for a quarterback naked, you know, a bootleg of something of that nature. So another way to eliminate a big play and a deep ball player. And, and you know, it sounds fairly simple, but oftentimes when you, you game, uh, you know, a corner or even a safety, you give up a deep zone. And if, if the offense, you know, if they catch you on that, you're sort of kind of live by the sword, die by the sword. We're going to try to be sound, and by taking care of these three things, uh, we hope to achieve these top three. Uh, most importantly, number three, which is to eliminate big plays. Okay, now I'm going to discuss our basic alignments. And as I said, you know, this is key to playing the defense, is having proper alignments. Starting up front. We have four down linemen. We have two ends and two tackles. I usually designate one as a nose uh, just because at our level, I, don't, I like to learn for a guy to play in a shade on a center and another guy to play a three technique. Um, those guys can be interchangeable, but for teaching purposes, I like to simplify as much as I can. This end here is a crash end. He's a wide player. He doesn't necessarily line up in a five technique and play heavy on a guy. He's actually a yard outside the offensive tackle. This defensive tackle is in a heavy three technique. If you were going to make a mistake on alignment, I'd rather him be heavy than I would to be too loose. He is playing the outside shoulder of the offensive guard. The nose guard is playing on the center, not in the gap, but literally on the center, as a shade on the center, on the shoulder of the center, and trying to uh, key that center. The five technique end is a little bit of a different end because he's playing in a heavy technique. He's a defensive lineman playing on the shoulder of an offensive tackle versus the other defensive end who was playing a little more loose. 
Again, at my level, that's why these guys are different. Some guys that are 4-3 guys have the same ends and the same tackles that play different positions. And that would work, too, as far as scheme. But to, to really simplify teaching, we have a five technique and we have a crash end uh, that are different. Our Leo linebacker is our outside linebacker who will play on a tight end if there is one or on a number two receiver. The, tight, the Leo position is going to be a one-by-one one outside of the tight end in a tilted stance reading the release of the tight end. Our Mike and our Will are traditional inside linebackers, and as long as the offense has two backs in the backfield, we're going to have two linebackers in the box. And these guys are four-yard linebackers, Mike being a B-gap linebacker, Will uh, being also four yards. A little different in the way we run our 4-3, our Will is aligned over the tackle. A lot of guys keep their linebackers in on A-gap, but we're looking for an advantage out here, which I'll get into in a little bit. Over here, our corners sort of look like a cover two shell, but our corners are, are five to six yards off the ball. And this strong safety is on the, on the twin side or on the strength of the, of, the secondary, of the secondary call. He's going to be one by eight off the tight end. Okay, The free safety here is going to be ten yards deep and splitting the difference between the offensive tackle and um, the split end. Okay, when I say get eight men to the ball, you can see how we are gap sound as far as our linebackers go. This would be the eighth guy that we're speaking of. And we're going to read, um, and when talking about force, we're going to try to read this block by this tight end. So if this man would block out, okay, the Leo would fight that pressure and the safety would be the inside filler, outside in. Of course, we're going to have a linebacker tracking the ball. But our linebackers always track the ball inside out. In other words, we don't want our linebacker to fly too flat and have the ball cut underneath him. The linebacker, when he flows to the ball, should be nice and tight so that he's playing on the inside shoulder of the running back, inside out. If the tight end were to block down, whether it's the end or whether he's coming to the linebacker, this Leo linebacker will now close and the safety will be the outside player. So it's a combination. It's a read between the Leo and the safety as to how we're going to get that other guy down. Over on this side, so our, our force player, okay, our force player is our Leo in combination with our safety, depending on the block of the tight end, okay? On the other side, our corner is in what we call cloud. In other words, corner support. Our corner is the force player on the weak side. On paper, it might look like this edge is open. But if you, if you think about this alignment of this crash end, the three technique here and the will linebacker, we actually have three defenders to their two blockers. And this and this make for difficult blocks. Okay? If he were to try to make his way to the linebacker, now we've got a free player here. So we think that that alignment makes that, helps set that edge. But over here, the corner is the force player with the safety being the deep half player. 